Joining us now, our second guest of the day, Anson Winder, BYU basketball insider and analyst on BYU Sports Nation. Anson, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Guys. Were you Good busy? Were you, excuse me, sorry. Uh, were you uh, busy texting? Is that what was going on? Oh. Checking Twitter? Yeah, you know, I got to check Twitter, stay updated with <laughs> the, the news today, so... Don't, I apologize. Don't, don't, he doesn't need to answer to you. Oh, no, I'm not calling him out. I'm just saying what was going on. You do That's what you want to do on your you. phone, Thanks, Anson. Spencer, when you're I sitting in the mustard it. seats, you are granted whatever phone <laughs> privileges you would like. Did you guys notice that Colorado had the same mustard seats, yes. by the way? They copied They us. have the same mustard seats. We put those in in like 71. Yeah, they What's copied us. It's okay, though. <laughs> BYU, a nine-point loss. Not really a laughing matter. It Really, it's, it's becoming a concern. But, Anson, as this team moves forward at 6-3, and three, what do you see as some adjustments that BYU basketball will try and implement to to get better on the road? Um, there's a multiple multiple effects that coach could throw out there as far as changing lineups, changing defenses, changing offenses. Even um, I know he stressed going in the posts earlier in the year, and we could see him go back to that maybe a little bit more um, as our outside shooting isn't consistent as we would have liked it to be. But uh, there's, a, there's an array of things that coach could do um, going in. I think the timing of when he makes his adjustments is always crucial. And we've found success before with him making changes to lineups and to different sets that we do. So I look for that going on in the future and uh, for next game. I want to break some of those down in a moment, but you, you uh, hinted at it, and let's talk about it. Dave Rose, really good the last couple of years to where BYU had to make some in-season adjustments. I like to think that the team is more like jello than they are concrete in that it's solidifying as you go, right? So you started, all of a sudden the season changed. Uh, Josh Sharp started, season changes, right? Um, so what is it about Dave Rose and his ability to make adjustments that is so good? I think it's the timing. Um, you know, you're down in the dumps and, and you need a change, you need a spark, and he finds that solution just like that. And from there we go on a streak. I think we've seen it the last couple of years. Um, I know I saw it firsthand, watched it, where he makes substitutions and changes to lineups and – we go on five or six game winning streaks, and that's carried us into or given us momentum uh, to get us to the tournament like we have these past couple of years. So I think it's the timing of, of when he makes these changes. What is Coach Rose and the coaching staff, for that matter, like when you go through adversity? What are the practices like? What's the locker room like? Because, you, I mean, you did this for a few years. You have been in these similar situations. What is the coaching staff approach like? I definitely think it's gut checks. Everyone kind of has to look themselves in the mirror and say, what What do I need to be doing better? Um, how do I contribute to this team? Because clearly things aren't going the way we would like. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely guys looking themselves in the mirror and say, hey, what can I do better? And Coach is definitely pushing guys to do better as well. Um, practices aren't easy. Um, he's not going to make this a, a cakewalk in practice. We're not, we're not going to focus on all positives. You know, we're going to have to focus on some of the negatives too and get better from there. So that's, that's something that I see from – practices going forward is guys are going to have to be accountable for their roles on this team and, and have to start contributing a little bit more. I just realized it's like sweater day on the set. Are you guys you yeah, like are you feeling this? It's sweater day. Because it, it's cold? It's because cold, it's snow? man. Is that why? I knew you guys were going to, so. You knew? I try and you got the you memo guys. Yeah, this I got morning memo. about sweater day? Yeah. You know Anson's showing up like <laughs> with the purpose of I know, showing he, up. I know. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, yeah, exactly. He's always showing up that way. I have some competitions. So I have to try and <laughs> it's it's weird that BYU is playing um, so poorly on the road. This is typically, BYU is typically a pretty good road team. What are you seeing that's so different on the road, especially in the first half? Um, it's easy. I think you look at the roster and you see there's so many young guys. There's freshmen and sophomores and even some juniors who don't have as much as experience as you may like. And it's just not having that comfortable um, aspects of going on the road. Um, I remember as a freshman, sophomore going on the road, and especially riots and places like Colorado, you don't know what to expect. And it's different. And I think you saw that a glimpse of that, you know, these few, first few road games is – or guys need to get comfortable playing on the road. And it's it's easy winning in the Marriott because it's the home field advantage, the sixth man, and you're comfortable because this is where you practice every day. But going on the road, it's not the same. And I think it's just a matter of getting these games under your belt, getting more experience, challenge, playing challenging teams on the road, and, and just getting comfortable because it's just not there right now. How long did it take you individually before you felt comfortable in a hostile road environment? Um, it took... A few neutral sites, too. I think just being away from home helps a ton. The fact that you aren't playing in the Marriott on a daily basis helps you get used to being on the road. 
And there's just a few games that need to get under your belt. You have to see yourself win, whether it be against a, a mediocre team or a really good team. You have to see yourself win on the road and say, hey, this is definitely something we can do. And you have to band together as a group and say, it's just us on the road. We don't have a, a crowd rallying behind us every possession, good or bad. It's just us and our coaches trying to battle through each possession, and that's something you have to get through um, through time. Let's talk about some of these potential adjustments with personnel. So Chase Fisher, um, it's wild how BYU goes uh, if he's good. If yeah. he's off, it's it's going to be a tougher night. What what uh, as a former roommate of Chase Fisher's, what what did you say to him last year? Maybe when he struggled trying to help him through a time like this. Um, it's not so much saying; it's more of doing. I think he got more reps up in practice. He he focused more on his game in practice and outside of practice as well. Just getting shots up and getting more comfortable. Um, because as we know, Chase is a competitor, and he wants to win. By no means is he um, wanting to play bad in these games or, or miss shots. I think he's shooting shots that we expect him to make, and he mm -hmm. expects to make. Yep. I think Coach you know, said that at the end of his, his in-game in speech was that we definitely got the shots that we wanted him to shoot and we were expecting him to make, and it's just a matter of watching them fall. And I think he'll get back in the gym and get more comfortable and shoot those shots probably a million more times, and we'll see him go in you know, as the games go on. The time has already passed so quickly, Anson. Once again, we need to wrap up, but before you go. I just go, got going. Okay, I, I want to <laughs> know. We can do this all day. It's rivalry week. BYU-Utah in the Las Vegas Bowl. I need you to put on your football analyst hat for a moment and give me your score prediction for the Vegas Bowl on Saturday. Prediction. Uh, I'm going 24-21, Kooks. Okay, BYU by three. I like that pick. I, I think, think all of BYU Sports yeah. Nation likes that pick. I think it's going to be a good game, a close one. Anson, really intriguing stuff as we look at BYU basketball. Looking forward to uh, more of that with you and inside the mindset of what it's like to go through some struggles and hopefully successes as the Cougars move forward. Definitely. It's fun. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. You got it, man. The Zach Selyus of BYU Sports Nation. Comes off the bench, makes threes. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Brings it. Get him more shots. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go to the hole. <laughs>